So there's lots of content out there already that gives you some tips on how to climb more efficiently when you're on the wall or rock. But today I'm going to give a little bit of advice and tips about how you can manage your time more efficiently to fit climbing around your busy schedule. And these tips are going to help you to climb more consistently and stay motivated over time and that's going to lead to bigger improvements, which is what we all like in our climbing. So tip one, most important thing I think is make a schedule and this can be writing it down the old fashioned way in a paper diary or in a Google calendar or something on your phone but the process of writing it down is really useful to get it ingrained in your mind. Have a look at your schedule so I do this at the same time every week, sit down and plan out my whole week not just for my climbing but all aspects of my life. So look at when you have gaps in your schedule where you could fit in your climbing and pencil that in, put pen to paper, put it in your Google Calendar, whatever, make sure it's written down. You're so much more likely to get it done if it's written down and you've already planned it out, how many sessions you're going to do each week and you waste so much less time thinking about when am I going to do my sessions, do I have time to go, do I not. If you don't have a schedule then you might get home from work and realise, oh wait, maybe I did have enough time to go climbing tonight if I'd not faffed around just now and done whatever and then you've missed the opportunity to have your session. That's tip number one. Plan your week, make a schedule, commit to it. Tip two is uh, find a climbing partner or a group of people that you can climb with regularly. It doesn't have to be the same person all the time and this is really useful for keeping your motivation high so you all get you know a lot of motivation from seeing each other's sends and each other's you know psych uh, in the climbing wall or at the crag and that's really great for your motivation you know you bounce off each other's um, highs and, and lows as well I suppose but you can always pick each other up when things aren't going as well yeah I don't think I can do that one I've not completed the last like six boulders I've tried to do so you'll improve more by climbing with other people who are maybe a little bit better than you. Not so much that you can't learn off them because they're just like in a completely different league, but a little bit better is good to push you a little bit each session. Third reason why I think it's really good to have a climbing partner or partners is for accountability. So if you plan to train together, and you say, right, Wednesday night we're gonna to go to the climbing gym and do this session together, then you're so much more likely to go than you might be if you're on your own. Say you come home from work and it's raining and you're tired. If you were gonna go climbing on your own, you might think, oh, actually, I don't fancy it tonight. I'm just gonna put my feet up and watch TV. But if you've planned to go climbing with your friend, then hopefully you're a good friend and you're not gonna let, let your pal down. So you're gonna to get to the wall and you're gonna get another session in, which is great. So tip three, another really useful training tool is record your climbing journey or climbing progress. This is a great way to keep your motivation up and keep track of your goals. If you are a person who's goal oriented, then you wanna set some big goals. Maybe you've got a big goal for the year of climbing a certain grade or doing a certain project. You can feel overwhelmed by this huge big goal, you know, I'm here now, I wanna be there. How am I gonna get there? That's a huge leap. You need to break that down into smaller goals. A good way to stay motivated is write down those goals. This could be, you know, you might have a goal for a short period of time, like a month, and keep track of your progress. Maybe write a little journal. Um, and that's a good way to stay motivated, recording the progress each session. And you'll see over time that you have made little gains and those are gonna build towards the bigger gains that are gonna help you achieve your major goals, which is great. So tip four is have a home workout routine. Now we don't all always have time to get to the nearest crag. Maybe there isn't even one nearby and you've got to travel quite far and you can't get, you know, even 10 minutes away to the local climbing wall, whatever. Maybe you've only got 30 minutes this day and that's the maximum you can do and you've got to fit it in between other family, home, work commitments, whatever. So even though you might think, I can't really do any climbing, I can't do any really specific training, I just won't bother. It's a better attitude to think something is always better than nothing. 
So you can invest just a tiny bit of money in some home training equipment, which can be really useful. Um, things like we've quite recently got a pull-up bar and Sam's found that really good motivation tool because we've kind of permanently hung it over the door which maybe not everybody wants in the house at all times but every time you walk past it you see it and you think oh maybe I'll do some pull-ups today or maybe I'll do them after lunch maybe I'll do them right now and that's a good way to fit in tiny little bits of training get a few home weights get some bands whatever you can also do body weight exercises get outside for a run 30 minutes all you need is your trainers cardio is really great workout for uh, that will help your climbing especially your endurance or even if you're just a boulderer you might think what's the point in going for a run power in your legs go and do some sprints through a few sprints around the block it's better than nothing tip five final one something really simple but quite useful tool is have a climbing go bag if i want to go right now all i have to do is pick this bag up and get out put my shoes on would be useful maybe a coat it's pretty cold and get out the door and i'm ready to go i've got my shoes chalk bag which is inside another bag because it leaks harness leggings water bottle a spare pair of socks i don't have to start faffing around when i get in from work thinking oh i'll have to get all my climbing stuff together now and before you know it 15 minutes have gone and that's 15 minutes short of your training and then maybe you've missed the bus and then maybe you've missed your session have your bag ready to go all the time this way there won't be any missed opportunities to go climbing so those are my five tips if you've got any other tips that maybe i didn't mention or thoughts about what i said then please drop us a comment and if you like the video then give it a thumbs up and subscribe and thanks for watching and if you do like our videos then i would recommend you go and check out in defense of slab climbing uh, it's one of our favorite videos that we made because it's a real uh, contentious subject between me and Sam because he loves the slab and I hate it. So that's a great video to check out if you've got the time. But I'm out of time. <laughs>